What is up everybody? Welcome back to Vanland. This is a very special day for us because we're going to be revealing to you guys one of the most complex and intense builds that we did this year and it turned out to be one of the most amazing vans that we've ever built at Vanland. Pretty much all the features that we offer on sprinter vans went into this build. So this is super cool. I think you guys are gonna really love to do this tour with us. We're super excited about it. We're gonna start with the exterior and then take you guys around and show you the interior as well. The first thing is the color. Everybody asks us, what is the color? The clients actually picked this color out themselves. This used to be a white sprinter and they thought it looked too much like a plumber's van. So they wanted to spice it up and kind of give it their own flair. Galapagos green is the color and that's a Benjamin Moore color. We applied it as a satin finish. A lot of people ask us, is it a wrap? Because that's really popular these days to wrap vans. This is actually a paint job. We did the top, the sides, blacked out the wheel wells and went all in on the paint on this one and we think it turned out amazing. You won't see this anywhere else and our clients, when we returned it to them after it got painted, they really loved it. We've got a California tuned off-road hammerhead bumper with the worn winch on it. And uh, this is really great to have if you're gonna be doing any four-wheel off-road at all in order to recover yourself if you get stuck or more than likely to help somebody else who got stuck. So we really like this feature. It's an actual steel bumper, so it gives you real protection on the front. Up top, we have an LED light bar, and we think that goes really good with the style of this van. So of course you can put some Baja lights on the California tuned bumper, but the client came to us and they said they wanted a van that looked aggressive on the outside, but not too aggressive, and then really refined on the inside. So we think the LED light bar, it illuminates the road when they're driving at night, but it doesn't stick out too much on the front, so it gives it a little bit more of a sleek look. On the back, we added the spare tire carrier from Alvans. So we went with the full-size spare. We needed the room underneath the van for water tanks, so we moved the spare up here, and this is a full-size, and it matches the tires on the rest of the van, so I think that is a nice thing to add. You wouldn't want to have to change a tire and then be riding on the factory spare, which is smaller. These are actually 17-inch tires and rims, which is bigger than the factory, which is 16 inch. Here we've got the Alvans Sherpa mounted with two one-up racks to hold bikes or other gear that you might put on here. The Sherpa is really cool because in the winter you can change this into like a ski and snowboard carrier. You basically just pull these off and put a, a different attachment that holds your other gear. Typically on the vans off of the roof rack, we will put a set of load lights or scene lights. So that light shines down here and then again in front of the sliding door. So basically if it's at night and you're trying to load gear, that's gonna give you the illumination to see what you're doing. You also see we put on a Fiamma awning. I really love putting awnings on vans because opening that basically doubles the livable space that you have to work around the van. So it's pretty much a must in my opinion. And that is a Fiamma F45 that mounts right on the side of the aluminous rack. We put some side steps on here. These are actually Omega side steps, which is kind of a mid-range step. But for the look of this van, we actually thought this is one of the best choices to kind of match the overall style on the outside here. We did a wheel and tire upgrade. We went with the black Rhino mid-hill on this, which we think looks terrific in the matte black finish. And then these tires, are the Yokohama Geolander XT, which is a nice tire if you don't need something that's extremely aggressive for off-road and you need it biased a little bit more towards highway driving, this is a great tire because it has super good style, but it's a little quieter on the road than it's like a BF Goodrich KO2, for instance. We also put on a Van Compass suspension with this. This turned out to be a fairly heavy van. We're not riding too heavy but the Van Compass suspension is a must to get this thing to ride softer and to not sway so much in the wind. That was a really great upgrade to it. And actually this van, I've driven a lot of vans and this one drives super well. I don't know what it is. Something about the weight distribution, the shocks, and basically everything went, that went into it. Um, for being a 170 and somewhat of a heavy van, it drives amazing.
When we were doing the paint job, we also did windshield protectant and did a tint on the side windows. This came to us as totally a cargo van with no windows on it at all. We went with kind of an all glass look on the front so that it wasn't just large green panels that we had painted. So I think that is a nice look. And then in the back here, we added the flare space flares with the small slider windows in them. We've got the short power connection right here, so you can plug into a 30 amp outlet. That would charge the batteries and basically switch over completely to AC power in the van. Just so you know, this van is completely off grid, even though we have a way to plug in, but just to kind of maintain and top up the batteries. We put in 600 amp hours of lithium battery storage in here, plus an inverter, solar panels, and alternator charger. So there's plenty of power on here. If you're interested in power systems, we actually made a video um, that you can find right here that goes over a complete power system. That video was for a 144 and this is a 170. So they're a little bit different, but if you wanna know more about the power systems we do, you can check that out. Here we've got the water connection and this van is rocking 49 gallons of fresh water storage. We're using two different fresh water tanks plus the hot water heater, which holds five gallons. So basically all told 49 gallons of water, that's a lot. But again, being an off-grid van, the one thing that you're always filling up on is water. It seems like you're running out quicker than anything else. So with 50 gallons of water, that should give them a very, very long weekend of fresh water for the van. We've got an aluminous roof rack and ladder. For the style of this van, we thought this ladder was kind of the perfect choice. It sort of matches the front bumper and just think the overall style of the round ladder goes really well on this van. If you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of roof racks, so I want to take you guys up and show you what's on the top of this 170 roof rack. Let's go. We're up on the roof. Just wanted to show you there's actually a lot going on up here, but there's still some room to kind of hang out. In the back here, we have an Arctic Turn skylight. Since the bed is high, you can open this all the way up and peek out. And this lets a ton of light into the van. It takes up a fair bit of space up here, but um, we still have some space to do other things. So this is an aluminous roof rack. It's the double loop roof rack with the perforated deck. And this has been a super good roof rack choice for a lot of the vans that we've done. It's very comfortable up here. You can walk on the deck. The clients actually added an air conditioning system to the van kind of mid-build. So we were actually able to make a new hole in the, in the aluminous roof rack and put a custom trim on to accommodate this. This is the Nomadic 3000 air conditioner. And we actually did another video on these as well. We've been doing a lot of videos lately. So if you want to learn more about this 12 volt air conditioner, you can check that out right up here. Um, this is cool because it's actually kind of low profile. Some of the air conditioners take up so much space up here. You can see them from the ground and they look kind of bulky. We actually love this one because when you put it in with the roof rack, it's only sticking up a couple inches above it. So it's kind of sleek, super cool and very reliable air conditioners. These are some of our favorite air conditioners. We're using them in a lot of the vans we do and you can find these on our store page. They're very popular. So if you need one, give us a call. We can get one out to you guys right away. Moving on to the other side, of course we have a Max Air fan here and a 100 watt Zamp solar panel up front. Just keep the batteries topped up when the sun's out. And we left ourselves a little bit of a deck here. This is kind of a landing area, so when you come up the ladder, you have somewhere to step up onto and maybe sit and watch the sunset. Or if you had some extra gear, this would be a perfect place to kind of strap it down and carry it without having to put it inside. So that's the roof rack. This adds so much to the van. It's like the solar panel, if you need to come clean it, it's super easy. You can maintain all of these components. It holds the awning, but more importantly, it just gives you a way to get on top of your van and check out the amazing views. That's a wrap for the outside. We wanna take you guys in and show you the interior, which is super special. So I'm gonna head on down. Have I told you guys, I love this van. This is one of the biggest projects we did this year, and I just love the feel of it overall. You've got kind of the burly exterior and the cool, aggressive look, and that's matched with a more refined interior. So this is one of the 
best builds that we did this year and we're super proud of it. I just wanted to give a shout out to all the van builders out there. I'm sure you guys have a special build that you did this year too and we know how hard these are, how much work goes into them. If you're a van builder, please comment below and link us to your favorite build that you've done this year. We know these aren't easy and just wanted to give some props to you guys. This is just such a cool van and it's super comfortable and it's, like I said, very capable. So here it is, check it out. Let's see what we did. This is it. This is the interior of one of their favorite vans that we have ever done. With the flares in the back, this is an east-west orientation for the bed, and it really gives you so much space in here. As a matter of fact, we showed this van off at the Van Expo at Lake Tahoe a couple months ago, and the first thing that we heard from everyone when they came in here is, oh my gosh, there's so much space in here. That has a lot to do with the white that we use for the ceiling and the walls, but also with the east-west orientation of the bed, there actually is a ton of space in here. You have full sleeping, a nice lounge, a full galley, a bathroom, and a wardrobe, and tons of storage, probably more than they actually need. Starting with the bed, super cool. You have little windows here to kind of look out, check out what's going on out there. And I am just about six feet tall, and this pretty much does it for me, sleeping wise. The flares give it enough room um, so that you can fully stretch out. This is actually a 10 inch memory foam mattress. So I would have to say that this is definitely the most comfortable bed that I've ever been in inside a van. Cool little nightlight back there so you can read. Again, we have the Arctic Turn roof hatch here. Bug screen on that side and blackout on that side. We did a full sound system in the back here. It's separate from the front stereo. If you're watching movies back here or you just kind of want to rock out with your favorite tunes, we put in a new sound system to basically liven up the back of the van. We also did some custom work on some of the more difficult spots on a Sprinter van, which are all the areas that aren't covered with something and are just metal. We did a, uh, a foam on there and like a leatherette materials to soften it up because that is something you lean up against when you're in the bed. And then some details with the bamboo and the speakers and we have window covers for the back. It's super comfy and cozy back here and it's it's a bed that you could, you could be in for quite a few days and not feel like you have to go home and get back in a real bed. So up here we've got some storage. fronts on these aluminum shelves. We put in a fairly significant lounge area here. There's definitely plenty of seating for at least three people and for two people to eat. We've got a nice swivel lagoon table here that you can use to work at, at the computer, or it's kind of perfect for a couple to sit across from each other and eat here. And then there's also still room for another person or a very nice lounge location. You got the window, spot to put your drink or your laptop and a perfect place to work. And oh my gosh, the sun's going down right at this moment. And onto the galley. So we've got a 14 inch sink with a flip up countertop for a little bit of extra space. Again, tons of storage all through here. A 65 liter refrigerator. and a two burner gas stove. So the clients were interested in having gas in here. This is the only propane that we've used on the whole build. Um, so we actually just used one of the small green canisters to power this so we don't have a large propane system on. Did I tell you guys, this van has a ton of storage in it. We actually have three large wardrobe style drawers here to kind of put all your clothes in. There's one, two, three of those. Plus we also have here, kind of a large chest that holds all of the stuff that you may not be using in the for the moment. 
and we even did some mood lighting down here. So that illuminates the floor as soon as you open the sliding door. So you can kind of always see what's going on in here without having to turn on the overhead lights. And then in key places, we put the 110 volt outlets here so that you can use a laptop. And then we also have one at the base of the galley so that if you have a blender or a kettle or something that you want to plug in, you can do that right there. You guys saw the air conditioner from the top. This is it from the underside. Um, these nomadic air conditioners are really cool because they are basically flush with the ceiling and don't take up any extra headspace, which is awesome. And I actually really love where this one is placed because with the air conditioner here, you can turn it on and use it when you're sitting in the lounge, it's blowing right on you. You can direct it over to the bed and then you can be cooled off when you're sleeping or hanging out. Or most importantly, if you're cooking, you can spin them around and have the air blowing right on you while you're doing your cooking. So this is kind of the ideal spot, I think, to put the air conditioner versus in the back over the bed, which I don't think it would be quite as useful back there. And here is the shower. To show you how much room is in here, it's actually quite comfortable. Plenty of room. Move around. To kind of stylize the interior, we did um, we did kind of a faux subway tile, which I actually think it looks really cool. When you sort of open it up, you're maybe not expecting it, but it just gives it kind of a cool style. And actually, when we went to the Adventure Van Expo in uh, Lake Tahoe, this was one of the other things that people commented about. You wouldn't believe how many people said like, I have to have this. This is my favorite van because it has such a nice bathroom shower in it. 24 by 36, it's a prefabricated aluminum shower that we kind of just built in here. So it's super lightweight, totally waterproof. It's an important feature if you're gonna be staying in a van for more than like a day or two. You know, a way to clean up and then at night a toilet to use. Um, it's just actually super nice. It just gives you like the feeling that this has everything. Um, everything you need, your food, your water, your bed, and your toilet and shower all in your van, which I think is super cool. So we put in a full wardrobe in here too. Again, there's so much storage. We actually use the top for the power system and some of the gauges so that you can kind of see all that at eye level and you know manage your systems easily. In here, we've got plenty of room to um, you know, hang your coats, put your gear, just kind of easy access from the front and from the side to get at your personal belongings. And then also two drawers. I think these would be perfect for shoes or blankets. If you're building a van, you have to think about where you're gonna put all your shoes because that's one thing that you'll always end up with multiple pairs of shoes kind of rolling around. So that's why in this wardrobe, we put two shoe drawers so that all that could be kind of kept away and looking tidy. We've got some dimmable lights, set the mood, so those are cool. A Max Air fan up here. The placement of this was important to us too because it is actually right above the shower. There's not an internal vent in the shower, so we went and put the Max fan right here. So you can kind of open the door when you're done, turn this on and get all the humidity out. It's also right above the kitchen cooktop. So again, you can crack open one of the windows on the sliding door and all of the moisture and the smells will go right out the fan. We have a diesel powered S-Bar heater in here, of course, and we put the control right here. Again, I like to have the controls at eye level, so it's really easy to manage them and kind of know what's going on without having to bend down or open a little trap door or something like that. The heater air blows out right by the floor underneath the seat base, and that's kind of the perfect spot. You typically don't want your heater to be too close to your bed. Um, at least for most people, it can tend to get a little too hot too quick, so it's sort of nice to have it low and on the opposite side of the van. Some more detail work up here. So this is a really tough spot. Again, if you're a van builder, you know this. Um, what do you do with this spot that is otherwise just exposed metal? Because it's it, it curves and it changes uh, kind of levels. So basically we went in and um, padded all of this and then padded the leatherette up here. This is a shiplap ceiling. The clients wanted to look, you know, they really wanted it to be open and airy up here. And so with just a like a full on white ceiling, it wouldn't look quite as good we thought. So we went with the shiplap, which has a little bit of definition um, with the lines in it. All right, and we put in an aftermarket swivel seat in this. So some of the vans come with factory swivel seats, which are fine, yeah. but if they don't, then you can put in an aftermarket swivel seat, which we've done here. Let me show you how it works. You just move the seat forward, grab this, turn it around, and, ooh, 
that's comfortable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much. It was our pleasure to give you a tour of this complete 170 4x4 Sprinter build. And we're actually going to do a second video on this van where we talk more about how we designed it, how long it took to build, how much did it cost, and also how you can get one of these vans too. So what we need from you guys is actually to leave a question in the comments below. If you have a question and I didn't answer it in this video, we're actually gonna pull from your questions and add them in the next video. So hopefully we can knock out some of the things that we didn't cover in this one. All right, thanks again so much, everybody. We will see you next time.